What's up guys, we're back with some more stories, so let's get on into that malicious compliance and I'll see you in a bit. I'm not allowed to clean if a customer is nearby? Game on. For some background story, I work in a place where no kids are allowed. It's essentially an adult gaming experience. These places are usually owned by a large group of people, usually related. And I can't specify what kind of place I work at, since it's against my policy and I'm paranoid. I clean up after messes. I don't mind it. I get paid good money to sweep up popcorn, clean toilets, and dump ashtrays. Where I live, it's a good chunk of change to bring home just to clean. A few weeks ago, I was sweeping the floors as I had already cleaned most everything. I have one headphone in, as is allowed by the company, and just focusing on my job. I'm hard of hearing, so I put the headphone in my ear that just barely works anyway. I can still hear the music somewhat and listen if someone is talking to me, so I've never had a problem before. While sweeping, I admit the first time I was a little close to a customer. Customer, ma'am, don't sweep near my feet, I don't like that. Me, in my best customer service voice, I'm so sorry. I will keep my distance next time. She doesn't reply, so I assume she's just into her game. I start going around the other side and sweep up a big pile of ash another customer left, just minding my business and ready for my first break already. Note, this time if she tried to kick out or point her toes, she wouldn't even be able to brush the broom even a little, which she did try to do. Customer. I just told you not to do that. Me. I'm so sorry. I thought I was far enough away this time. Customer. You lazy workers make me so damn mad. I'm in a bit of shock, as I've never had a customer talk to me this way in my current position. I actually get called over to clean up while a customer is at a game because they think it brings them luck. I don't want to rock the boat anymore, so I just say sorry again and leave it be. I make my way to the other side of the building and start cleaning there. I always think it's cute when some people see me sweeping and they raise their feet to let me get under them. It reminds me of when my mom used to vacuum and we would raise our feet so she could get under us. I consider it is very polite that they do this. After doing my rounds and cleaning, I keep a smile on my face as there are a lot of customers on this day and they find me most approachable as I am one of the only females on the floor. It's very normal for them to search out one of us to help them with stuff. Why they do this, I have no idea. I literally hear her yelling at the store manager for a few minutes, and I get called over after the customer storms out. Manager, I just had a complaint that you were sweeping too close to a customer. We're gonna pull the camera footage and most likely give you a point. Me, I admit I was close the first time, but I can even show you exactly where I was the second time. I wasn't even close enough to touch. Manager. Well, she is married to a wealthy man here and they own several businesses. And she has family on the council. At this point, the store manager is looking at me like I should know who this woman is. I'm new to the area and don't know many of the members from around where I work. But I also know this is a bad sign. Others have been fired for less for upsetting a council member's family member. The system is very corrupt to be honest, but there's nothing anyone can do. Manager. From now on, you don't clean near any customers at all. I'll draw up your point sheet and get started on it for you to sign. I am livid at this point, but just nod and go to clean the bathrooms. I have never received a point or any customer complaint in the five months I had been working there. And now suddenly my job is in jeopardy for doing my job. After the footage is reviewed, they admit that I wasn't too close, but point me enough that I have to really watch my back or I will get fired because your voice was super condescending. Compliance mode activated. I require a copy of my write up as it has the exact reason why I was pointed, and I can cover my ass. There's even a comment section where the manager can write off what they have told me to do to fix my behavior. She added that I forced overtime by clocking in early and late, and 
She just stands there and steals time without working these hours. I stop coming in early and start to refuse to stay late. She also states, I'm going out of my job description and to no longer do anything that isn't specified in the handbook for my job. I circle this part heavily. While it's not my job description to help customers or get them refreshments, I do it anyway. Now, I have a few days where I'm the only cleaning person at work because we are a small business. It's not bad, and I love those days as they go by faster. These days are also some of the days we are packed with customers. I'm honestly surprised this only took a few weeks before they tried to point me again. Because of where the gaming machines are set up, there is long stretches of the floor I am no longer allowed to touch. There are trash cans near a few of the most popular games, so I can't even change the trash. It doesn't take long for ashtrays and trash to overflow. The floor is absolutely covered in popcorn, food, ash, soda spills, and cigarettes. Per my store manager, I can't touch any of it because it's near a customer at all times. I keep myself busy throughout this time, doing things I normally don't have time for. I'm wiping walls down, cleaning every single window, scrubbing the floorboards, and even manage to do a few vents and get the dust out of them. Not once was I near a customer. They start to complain at the other employees that they are supposed to get the soda and popcorn while they game. Don't do rounds on the floor as often as my job allows me to. Since I am not allowed to clean near customers, I have no reason to go near them and I don't help out. Now, I let my compliance slide for a little bit when it comes to an elderly customer that can't get around so much. A few of the ones that know I'm hard of hearing will even sign to me across the store to get my attention and I go over to help. And a few of them have asked me why I'm acting so weird. Little did I know, most of them had family on the council as well. One of the women who's there every day even laughs and tells me she would do exactly what I'm doing. At the end of the week, I'm called in by one of the best managers we have. He's just an hourly manager, so he doesn't have a stick up his rear. He just tells me to be careful and cover my ass. The second week rolls round, and I'm running out of extra cleaning to do. Everything is very dusted down every day. Walls are spotless, windows clean, and the bathrooms are mm, just perfect. I'm honestly proud of what I have achieved in this time. The morning cleaning crew has been complaining day in and out. Even though they show up three hours before opening, cleaning the filthy store in the morning isn't really in the time allotted for them. The grass starts to get overgrown, the lot is filthy, the break room is a mess, and the store is starting to stain from spills being left all night long. One of the daytime cleaning supervisors asked me what's wrong because my normally spotless floor is so filthy in the morning. But once I explain what has happened, he is more upset I'm one shot from being fired than anything else. My job isn't easy, but I get paid good so I don't call in and show up early to help the morning guys out a lot because they have a lot more to do than I do. Finally comes the day my store manager shows back up and she's pissed. I'm cleaning the coke machine when she pulls me into the office to give me another write-up. It's not enough to fire me, in fact it's half a point away from being fired. She had my direct manager all the way from the main office and the big boss over all of us in the room with her. I let them go through their spiel about how disappointed they are in me and how my job is very easy to do. They can't believe I've been wasting my time on useless cleaning. Apparently it's my fault a few of the gaming machines are down for repairs, as I didn't clean up soda spills fast enough, and the liquid got directly into the machines. So many customers complained they didn't have someone they could call to to cater to them. I get yelled at for not serving excellent customer service to them. The big boss even states the fact he wants me fired right now, but my direct manager has saved my ass. 
he reminds me that we live in a at will state and I could be fired for farting the wrong way at this point. After they're done shredding me to pieces and I'm damn near tears, I whip out the original point sheet and slide it to them. I open my handbook and turn to my job description page and slide that over as well. I quietly say that per the handbook, I'm not allowed to hand customers anything because I have the wrong job code for it. I've just been doing what I've been told and staying away from the customers. They can even check the cameras. They got quiet. My direct manager gets pissed. He tells me to take the day off and that I will get paid for it. Unfortunately for them, it's a day I work by myself. Fortunately for me, it's before my days off, so I get three days off in a row. When I get back, I'm told my points have been wiped and I'm back to zero. I'm supposed to disregard any write-ups I have received and do what I normally do. I essentially get told I have free reign of the floors to clean it how I see fit. While I have been happy at the results of my actions, I feel bad that my store manager was demoted to hourly. I unfortunately see her a lot more now, and she pointedly takes pictures of messes before I can get to them. I'm already planning on putting in my two weeks, as an old boss offer me my job back, plus my original raise. It's a dollar pay cut, but I'll be the acting manager a lot of the time. And to me, that's worth it. My direct manager offered me a raise to keep me, but I no longer want to work somewhere so toxic. I know I'm lucky that I can find jobs fast, but I'm gonna miss the sweet paycheck and benefits. Eat nothing unless it's this? Game on! So I saw the Beans post. It reminded me also of being a kid. Except mine was not illness so much as pure, unadulterated, stubborn youthfulness. Let me paint a picture. My grandfather, rest his soul, is the most stubborn person I have ever met. My grandmother and he are devout Roman Catholics, very much from the era of what the man of the house says goes, no matter what that may be, to the point I have never seen her argue with him except two times in my entire life, which is exactly the time I will be referencing, and a time he straight up called me ugly. He was a gruff grump of a man, obviously, for black fingernail polish. He did apologize for that, but my grandma tore him up beforehand. That tongue lashing was nothing compared to the time in question. My grandfather, being old fashioned, was big on the, you eat what you are given, you don't leave until your plate is clean, mentality. Now I was under six in this story, but I remember it so clearly, mostly because my grandma still seethes about it and brings it up regularly. It was one of the first times I was staying with them without my parents, due largely to my parents divorcing, meaning it was their, grandpa's, first time making my plate. The plate I was served was huge. I mean, thinking back, the plate they served me matched theirs. That huge to someone as young and tiny as I was? I was born premature and incredibly petite until puberty and still petite after that. It was dinner time and grandpa would not budge in his ways. I was crying, he was angry, and all because I was so full I could not eat anymore. My grandpa yelled and berated me as a child that I was going to finish my plate and I would not leave the table until I did. Okay, I don't leave the table. He sits there, expecting me to fold, but the problem is, I have always been just as stubborn as he, if not more. But only if you give me a reason to be. Which he did. My bedtime was supposed to be around 8pm, because it was the summer. I sat at the table, growing more and more irate. Tiny toddler unable to move, an exhausted level temper tantrum. All the while, I did not eat. I did not leave the table, I followed his instructions. Grandpa finally gives in around 4 in the morning, per my grandmother, and lets me leave. Ah, but of course, only if grandma saves my now 10 hour old plate for tomorrow. I didn't finish it, so now I would eat nothing else until that plate was finished. Whatever. 
Grandma does that and happily takes me to bed at last. I think I slept basically until lunch, but Grandma convinced him to allow me to. He was also the everyone gets up at six in the morning type. True to his word, he served me the plate. True to my resolve, I ate nothing. You don't leave until you finish the nasty plate. So I didn't leave. Cut to the chase. This went on between us so long that my grandma, pillar of patience and everything that is good, and woman who has hidden all but two arguments between her and her 50-year husband behind closed doors, freaking loses it. By the time she does, mold has grown on this plate. I haven't eaten, at six or less years old, in actual days. You can imagine how my temper had deteriorated. You can imagine how far my grandfather and I pushed my grandma. You can imagine how long this went on. How long it took to crack my grandma at long last. My grandma absolutely lost it. She took the plate and flung it, moldy food and all, across the room and screamed at my grandfather. I was silent, stunned, terrified. Grandpa was the same. I had followed instructions, she tells him. I had told him I couldn't eat that much when he first set the plate in front of me, as she had repeatedly when he was making it, apparently. And he had pushed the issue too far. She had tried to lightly stop this for days now, but lightly hadn't worked and she went all out. Eventually, terrified and starving, I completely deteriorate and am full on sobbing. And she basically force feeds me pop tarts and that honeycomb cereal. I remember because it was the only cereal I ate for three years following this incident, for whatever reason. While going absolute berserk on my grandfather and telling him he's the adult and he shouldn't have pushed it so far just to be right. And if anything is wrong with me, he is explaining to my father. Their son and a very overprotective father at the time, due to my mother literally trying to kill and kidnap me, which was why I was in their care to begin with, what happened and why he refused to feed his only granddaughter. When my grandma every now and then brings this story up, mostly when I end up not finishing my plate, which is rare, but certain foods make me sick and my family still goes by oldest male makes the plates for holidays, she makes sure to hit three points hard. One, I followed every rule my grandfather set forth like a stubborn, spiteful, hellish little gremlin I am. Two, my grandfather was undoubtedly in the wrong because the reason I didn't eat my food that next day was because it had already basically gone bad and tasted poorly after sitting out for so long. Plus, my picky eater behind had already been force-feeding myself to begin with the night before. 3. She had only met one person in her life as stubborn and absolutely unmoving in resolve as my grandfather, and that's me. I distinctly remember my grandma made all of my plates outside of holidays, when for a while my dad did instead of my grandpa, which was a big deal with our traditions until I was old enough to make them for myself if I was staying alone with them. And yes, Grandpa got chewed out again when Dad found out about it. Rest in peace, Grandpa, though. He is still one of my favorite family members, and I miss him every day. Grandma is still my favorite female family member, though. Grandma got my back, and turns out she's a straight-up savage when pushed. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories. And if you know the drill by now to sub if you liked it and still aren't subbed, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.